I miss waking up at 6 a.m. feeling productive, you know, because, you know, turning in an actual paper assignment is among the most fulfilling things that I can do with my life right now. But tapping a button and, you know, getting a little thumbs up from Microsoft Teams is not is not as uh, instantly gratifying, you know. Um, yeah, so I miss I miss being in, in a classroom, you know, just writing with a pencil, you know. Um, and uh yeah, so I, I I have a uniform at school, um, and I actually put on my polo the other day, my shirt, just to, just to see how it felt again. I almost cried. <laughs> what happens when two parent coaches, one a Christian and the other an agnostic Jew, sit down to talk about parenting? They take their listeners from surviving to thriving. I'm Dina Thayer. And I'm Kira Dorian. Welcome to Raising Adults, a podcast brought to you by Future Focused Parenting. Hi, everyone, and welcome to Raising Adults podcast. Kira and Dina here with you today and looking forward to sharing an important topic that is really relevant to the current situation. And while we've been careful not to have every episode laced with this challenging time that we're in, we have recognized and heard from many of you parents that the challenge of facilitating school at home is a big one. And so what we wanted to do today is bring you the perspective of the people actually doing the school at home. And so we have with us today my son, Mark, who is a sophomore in high school. Mark, say hello. Hi, everyone. And Kira's children, Reese and Rhiannon, who are in second grade. So you'll get to hear from an older student what that kind of looks like when they're a little more self-directed, and also from grade schoolers who really do need more of that parental facilitation. You're going to hear all about what's going well for them, what's hard for them, and what they want you as parents to know. So this is going to be yeah. hopefully helpful to many of you. And Kira and I might get to hear some helpful things too, or maybe some hard things. Who knows? I know. I'm kind of preparing myself because my kids have made it pretty clear they think I'm a terrible teacher, which honestly <laughs> I am. I am. But I, I was like, do I do I say anything? Like, hey, don't rip mommy to shreds on the podcast today. And I was like, no, just let them say whatever they're going to say. <laughs> yeah, they're going to be honest. <laughs> it is what it is. <laughs> I think it's so important though, because I feel like, and Mark, I'll be curious to hear what you think just of this comment, but I feel like a lot of people are talking about their kids and talking about what their kids must be going through and thinking really thoughtfully about what their kids must be going through. But I kind of wonder how many people are actually checking in to see how their kids are experiencing what they're going through. And, you know, in our frantic, frenzied attempt to try and care for them and and do right by them, I think it's easy sometimes to forget to actually just check in. Um, So that's, I think, the goal for today is for us to even get a chance to do that with our kids, but also just maybe for our FFPs to get a sense of, you know, what what are they maybe doing that is really working and that they should keep doing? And is there anything that maybe one of our kids will say that gives them some pause to, to make a course correction? Right. It's kind of a great sneak peek into the brains of the people actually doing it, not the, not the people trying to facilitate it. Yeah. Well, this isn't, and I can't tell you how many times I've heard already, and you can imagine my response, Dina, but how many, well, kids are resilient. They're going to be fine. And it just, like, it gets my back up. But I, what I think is true, and someone used this word the other day, and I liked it a lot. She said, well, kids are really adaptable. And I thought that's, that's what people mean when they say resilient, that they're adaptable. And I agree with that. I think kids do adapt really well, but the way in which they adapt, we want to make sure is healthy. Yes. Um, and I so, think it sometimes looks different from how we would do it. So that's important absolutely. to be aware of too. So yeah. Yep, All right. Interesting. Well, here we go. So Mark, first and foremost, how's it going? Like how, how are you and what's the experience been like for you? Yeah. Well, uh, you know, in the beginning I was just kind of stoked to, uh, you know, not have to go to school and wake up at 6am every day. Um, <laughs> and that wore off really fast. <laughs> um, I was, <laughs> I was excited to, to, uh, you know, oh man, like I get to, you know, sleep in and then go to bed late and just do my school whenever. And then I got about two weeks into it and I was like, okay, this is enough. I'm, I'm done. Um, and then, uh, but you know, it, it's, I'm, I'm really used to it now, which is nice. So I have, I have a kind of a loose schedule. I mean, it's not the best schedule. Uh, I mean, mm-hmm. I'm waking up at like, you know, like 11 ish. <laughs> um, and then, and then I'm going to bed, you know, later than I should but uh 
the, I think the I think the cool thing about it is that you really can uh, you know pick your own way to do it. I mean, I know a lot of my my buddies at school just uh, you know they wake up at like eight and they're done before twelve. That's not how I've chosen mm-hmm. to do it. But I mean, that's the kind of cool thing about it is that I can uh, kind of choose you know how to do it, and it actually works quite well. I mean, my schoolwork takes me probably about three four hours a day. Um, so you know, if I really you know grind it out and do it, I mean, it's not it's not even it's not even I would say not even as bad as actual going to school doing the work um but i mean it was definitely a tough adjustment period because um you know it's a lot it's really different you know you you don't have the teachers there to talk to and you don't have your other friends there just you know just a just a nudge away to ask them questions you know you kind of got to do it yourself and i think that's actually been kind of cool uh so i can you know kind of take a lot of ownership over what i'm doing um but yeah so i would say initially pretty excited and then got over it um but uh wah, wah. <laughs> yeah but but i mean now it's i've gotten into kind of a nice rhythm so at least i know what to expect i'm actually i'm actually feeling pretty prepared with kind of whatever whatever the teachers decided to throw my way because i mean in the beginning it was like oh man we have an essay to do at home without the teacher you know but now it's kind of you know i've kind of figured out a kind of a rhythm you know just to just to get it done in a really efficient way so yeah yeah. So I'm curious, like, what's it been like not having a classroom environment and not having your friends? Because I've said to your mom before that, you know, my kids are at an age where they definitely miss their friends, but teenage friendships are just essential. I mean, it's like such a huge part of your development and, yeah, for sure. you know, you're pulling away from your parents and leaning into those other relationships and just a really strange time to be without that. So how has how has that been? Yeah, so I'll address the classroom environment thing first. That was actually really tough, and I remember talking to my dad actually about it, um, and I was saying just how hard it was to kind of adjust to this environment that I'm usually in just to sleep, you know? <laughs> um, and, uh, and for a while, I didn't have a desk. We just got a desk, uh, thankfully. But um, so for, for the first, like, couple months, I was doing my homework in my bed, you know, with my phone uh just the just <laughs> arms reach away, right? So right. homework that was supposed to take me like three or four hours ended up taking me like, you know, 12 because um, <laughs> I had, uh, you know, I had all these distractions and I was like, you know, I did one math problem. It's time for a break, you know? So I had all this, uh, all these excuses. That's, that's really not conducive to, uh, to really just hunkering down and doing the work. And then once, you know, once that allure wore off of like, oh man, I can kind of do whatever I want with my schoolwork. Um, Then I kind of just decided, you know, I'm going to focus on what needs to be done right now, which is the three to four hours of schoolwork. And then, you know, I'm done for the rest of the day, which is really nice. Um, But I had to definitely understand that, you know, in order to actually be productive, I can't just be basking in the glory of, you know, just being in my room away from everyone, you know. And uh, I think it actually gave me a lot of appreciation for the environment that I have at school because Mm. I've never, no one's been in a situation like this before. Um, and it's given me a lot of, you know, kind of weird perspective. I mean, who thought I would miss going to the grocery store? I didn't, I certainly, you know, so, I miss um, it so much. (laughs) yeah, but, uh, no, yeah, exactly. But, uh, yeah, I mean the, the environment was a tough learning curve, but I think again, like I was saying, I've kind of gotten used to it. And then the second part, the friends part, um, that has been tougher. Uh, but, um, and my, my parents have been a little bit lenient with the whole, you know, stay at home because I mean, I mean, we've been going on walks and stuff and I've been able to FaceTime a couple of my buddies, but, uh, you know, yeah, that's, that's been a little weird. Um, but I mean, I think that this is a time where I'm really grateful for the kind of relationship that I have with my parents and my family, because I mean, it, it could, it could be a lot worse, you know? I, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm friends with my sister, I'm friends with my dad and my mom, so it's not terrible, but I mean, I definitely, I definitely miss my friends, you know? I mean, oh, yeah. uh, see, you know, I mean, my, I've, I've been in the same class, with the same people because of private school um with the same people since i was like seven so i mean and, and, I, and i've and i've formed really really strong uh, relationships with these people so it's kind of weird not seeing them all the time but uh you know i mean i'm i'm definitely thankful for you know the relationship i have with my family right now because i mean for people who are less fortunate and who have a harder time at home i'm sure this, this has been a lot tougher but um yeah the, the friends thing is a little is a little i don't know a little difficult but uh i'm definitely i'm definitely adjusting pretty well, I think. Wow. You're very thoughtful, Mark. I mean, it's always just such a pleasure to talk to you and your sister. You're so Thank articulate you. and the way you kind of see the world is is pretty impressive for your age, um, <laughs> even for an adult. <laughs> so, yeah. um, so 
Now, remember, mom is listening, okay? Yes, she and is. <laughs> her, heart, her heart is real. So <laughs> tell us, what do you feel like she's doing really well? And your dad, because are you you're bouncing back and forth, right? I am, yes. Week uh, on, week, week off. Week on, week off. Yeah. Okay. So, what do you feel like your parents are doing really well in this time to support you and kind of meet your needs? And is there anything that you would sort of wish was different, or that you'd sort of say to parents listening, like, "Hey, don't forget this piece; it's important too." Sure. Yeah. Um. So, I mean, first and foremost, that we had a conversation right, kind of towards when the whole coronavirus thing was blowing up you know everyone was realizing oh this is a this is an actual thing you know um and my mom and I, my dad and i had a conversation about how's the schedule going to look and i remember uh my mom was a little worried about um you know me <laughs> sleeping all day and uh staying up all night um and i told her i was like this is a this is a legitimate concern <laughs> <Especially> <laughs> i love um, that you knew that about yourself yeah no i mean i mean <laughs> I, I am a teenage boy and i'm no exception to the stereotype um but uh, sleep is very important to me. But you know, um, I, I told her I was like, "That's that's that's fair. That's a fair concern to have." But I said, "I want you to trust me on this, and just kind of, just give me a chance, right?" I mean, I mean, obviously, if I was you know waking up at two every day and then not finishing my schoolwork till like two a.m. the next morning, then we would have a problem. But uh, so I just asked that she give me a chance, and she said, "All right." But you know, if if it starts affecting your grades, then you know we're gonna have a different conversation, right? Um, and actually hasn't. Um, and part of the little weird thing about my school is that we count uh, comportment, which is behavior um, in the classroom uh, as a grade, as, as an actual, it's actually part of your grade, 15%. Uh, so I've actually been doing better um, at home <laughs> <laughs> because, uh, I mean, you know. We've uh, removed that ability for you to be the class yeah, clown. Exactly. Huh? So, yeah, yeah, like, no. Who are you going to clown around with? Like, yeah, exactly. hey, mom, I got a great joke for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, for, for sure. But um, And now Comportment's just showing up for the online meetings, which is not really hard to do. Um, I mean, unless you're, you know, unless you don't wake up until like 11, which I do sometimes. But, um, you know, so I've been, I've been showing up to the meetings and, you know, that's pretty much the only thing that Comportment or Behavior affects now. So my grades have actually improved and i mean it, it, um and that's like and it wasn't like a huge improvement but definitely noticeable and um so i guess i really appreciate the trust that my mom and my dad have uh and kind of showed there with um with that schedule because that would be a little weird to hear you know like just let me let me a 16 year old boy decide when i want to wake up to do school you know that doesn't really it's kind of seems counterintuitive um you know just to just to let you know let that kind of figure itself out but um yeah, so that's been great. And I, I really do appreciate like the, kind of the freedom they give me to just go on drives and stuff if I need to get out of the house. That's been that's been great. Um, because, I mean, change of scenery is really important now um, because, you know, I mean, you're just looking at the same four walls all the time. It's going to get a little <laughs> annoying, you yeah. know, and, and uh, I'm actually, I mean, my mom and I've talked about, uh, you know, just the kind of gloomy quarantine days that you get, you know, um, you try to be positive most of the time, but sometimes it just catches up to you. You're just thinking about it all. But um, so a change of scenery is really important, and they've they've given me that opportunity. Um, and like uh, they made sure that I could get my license right when I turned 16, which was great. So now I can just kind of you know if I need to go get ice cream with my sister, I can just do that. You know, <laughs> um, as far as what they can do better, um, I mean I I I'm sure I I could find something to complain about. Uh, if I really <laughs> dug deep enough, but I mean, it's nothing. It, it, I mean, I think it's telling that I'm having trouble thinking. Yeah. I'm, I'm not really having any any big big concerns right now. Um, so, what would you say then to parents, like you know, of maybe kids of all ages, but particularly of teens? Is there something that that you would want them to know? Like, hey, don't forget about this piece. Like, oh this sure, is, this is maybe more important than you even realize. Yeah. So. And I think I think there are certain exceptions to this case because not every kid's the same, but I think trust your kids a little bit more to just I mean, if I think I think one of the things I learned growing up was about logical consequences, right? If you you know, if once my mom started not giving me bedtimes, she was like, "All right, you go to bed at eleven. You're gonna be tired the next day, but I'm not gonna stop you, right?" And then I kind of learned what was wise and what wasn't, you know. And she mm -hmm. gave me that trust so that I could kind of take a little bit of ownership of you know my actual schedule and my life and and that's going to keep on uh affecting me as i grow up right the more freedom i have 
the more trust she's going to have to give me because, you know, I'm not always going to be under her roof. So I think trust your kids um, just to just, I mean, to a certain extent. Right. right. But, um, you know, trust them to, you know, get up on time. And if that doesn't happen, you know, the logical consequences, you know, grades are going to get worse or whatever. And if and if, you know, I guess I mean, I'm not a parent, but I mean, if you know your child to be someone who cares enough about school, trust them, you know. But yeah, I mean, trust your kids. I think I think that was it gives me a lot of respect for my parents. And I think knowing that your parents trust you will give you a, a really, a really nice relationship with them because, you know, a lot of my friends aren't the same. You know, a lot of them are, you know, there's, you know, they don't have that kind of trust with their parents, you know. And I think, I think part of the way I was brought up gave me that kind of feeling that I can, you know, I can go to my mom, my dad about anything, you know, I can talk to them about weird stuff. Right. Um, so yeah, trust. I think just, I think just, you know, let them take a little bit of ownership and if it doesn't work out right, you know, obviously don't just let them, you know, spiral out of control. But I think, yeah, I think trust is super huge, especially right now, you know, cause there's not a whole lot we can't control. Well, this, that's exactly what you made me think of is that it's, you know, beyond the, the positives in the relationship and all of that, what the trust does right now is give you a little bit of freedom at a time when you have none. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. you know, that how important that is to find find the spots where you can feel free right now. And I just I, I love that. I had, hadn't even thought of that. And the way that you just put that is is so true. It's so true. Like, you know, right. keeping that foundation of the relationship strong, but that gives kids freedom at a time when they feel so not free. Right. Yeah, <laughs> so sure. locked down. So thank you. That's wonderful. Wonderful feedback. OK, so before we finish up, Mark. Tell me what you miss. What are the weird, because we all have them, right? The like weird things that you're like, I can't believe I missed that. (laughs) What do you miss? Yeah. Okay. Well, um, you know, I have some, I mean, I've been with the same people for, you know, over half my life. So I've made uh, some friends and then I've, uh, there are people in the class who have been with me for a while and do not like me, um, which is fine. Right. (laughs) But I've ended, so, uh, you know, I'm, there's some people in my class that I that I struggle with, but I've ended up actually missing the interactions that I have with these people, um, <laughs> because you know, I mean, it, I mean, however weird and you know, kind of awkward it is, I do I do miss my class and I miss just the kind of environment that we have. Um, so yeah, I've, I've missed people who I didn't think I would miss. Um, I miss waking up at six a.m. feeling productive, you know, because you know, turning in an actual paper assignment is among the most fulfilling things that I can do with my life right now. But tapping a button and, you know, getting a little thumbs up from Microsoft Teams is not is not as uh, instantly gratifying, you know. Um, yeah, so I miss I miss being in, in a classroom, you know, just writing with a pencil, you know. Um, and uh, yeah, so I, I, I have a uniform at school. Um, and I actually put on my polo the other day. <laughs> my shirt just to, just to see how it felt again i almost cried um, <laughs> no but uh yeah it's it's been weird i mean yeah i mean i have uh i have my dress shoes that i have to wear for school in the back of my car they haven't been moved for months it's just weird to see them you know um and there's all these things that i used to do we have i think probably right before coronavirus started happening uh we had all these groceries that my mom bought that I specifically took for school lunches. And now I never eat them anymore because it's like, you know, in the morning I would be scrambling to get all my stuff together. So yeah, I'll grab like a pack of fruit snacks or whatever, but you know, I just miss the, I miss, I miss like feeling productive and, you know, and just not, not everything was so mundane, you know? Um, I, I'm, yeah. I just, so I guess I do miss weird things. Yeah. I miss the grocery store. I miss, you know, I miss traffic. Can you believe that? I miss traffic. No, um, I, I feel you. I kind of miss it too. It's yeah. bizarre. Yeah, no, I, uh, I was, I was a, a couple weeks before, before everything happened, I, I was driving to school and I live with my dad. I live in like Muckleteo by the mall, but kind of by Alderwood Mall and my school's in Woodville. So it's like a, you know, like a 10, 15 minute drive. And then it took me like 40 minutes to get to school. And now I'm like, where is everyone? You know, it's just <laughs> it's super weird. Um, really weird. And, and I, and I've found that I miss really odd things. Um, but, you know, there's also a lot of blessings right now. I got to keep reminding myself of that. So, yeah. Oh, I love that. What are the blessings? Well, I do get a lot of time with my family. And as annoying as it can be to share a bathroom with my sister, um, you know, there are a lot of good things, you know, like, you know, I mean, like 
my sister's she wouldn't she probably wouldn't have been home by now from college and uh so you know like like i mentioned earlier i can just i can like hey you want to go get dinner you know um and obviously we can't eat inside chipotle but you know we can get, <laughs> get takeout um so i get I get to hang out with her a lot um sleep <laughs> yeah. i mean there, there's it's definitely a blessing and a curse you know i can i could sleep in too late but uh you know, I mean, there's definitely a lot less pressure now, which is weird because it's still school, but um, I have a little bit, you know, you got a little bit more freedom to kind of mold your schedule to what fits. Um, so, yeah, I mean, a lot more freedom, a lot less pressure and just a lot more time with my family. Um, but, yeah, so, I mean, there's always there's always a silver lining, but uh, I guess it's a little bit tough to find right now. But, you sure. know, I think I think you got to take the wins where you can get them. So. Oh, uh, I can't believe I almost forgot this. So for the past, I'd, I'd say two years, um, I've been, I, I've, I discovered The Office like two summers ago and, I, and I've been pressuring my entire family to watch it. I got my sister hooked and my dad to a certain extent, but my mom has always been super anti The Office because it's super cringe for her, I guess. Um, but, uh, and she, she was talking a lot of smack about this show that I love so much. And so she decided like a couple weeks ago, um, she's like, if I'm going to be, you know, if I'm going to be slamming this show, I better understand what I'm slamming. So she committed to watch the whole series, um, which is great. And I get to watch her slowly, um, crumble because this show is great. And I think she knows it <laughs> and, uh, her sense of humor is gradually morphing to become more like mine because a lot of it is influenced by, by Michael Scott. Um, <laughs> so yeah, it's, it, it's, that's, that's been a, a, a definitely a highlight. Uh, is watching her understand all these jokes that I've been making for years. And she's like, oh, that's why you say that, you know? Like, yeah, I <laughs> yes. thought that was clear. Um, but yeah, yes. no, so that's been that's been a lot of fun. Now you know how we're spending quarantine, Kira. It's mm -hmm. great. And and for Mother's Day, they even bought me a t-shirt that says Shroot Farms, <laughs> Bed and Breakfast. Oh. <laughs> so I, I, have been, <clears throat> I have been having some special mark time mm -hmm. watching a show that makes me hide behind throw pillows regularly because I'm embarrassed <laughs> no, for the characters. Like, it's, like a, it's like a mixed blessing for you. It's it is like a combo bo bonding pack. time with your mm -hmm. son and I have to hide under a pillow to experience it. This is exactly <laughs> it. Oh, Mark, thank you so much for being with us and just being your delightful self. And I know that your mom and I are really excited to have you on for a full episode next season, but we appreciate you coming on and just sharing with our listeners, you know, what it's like, because I think, like I said, you know, we know from a parent's perspective, but it's so important we hear what it's like for you guys. So thank you so yeah. much for being with us. Yeah, no problem. My pleasure. Okay. Well, we got to hear from a high schooler. I don't even know if I said, but Mark's a sophomore. So we got that perspective. And now we're going to talk to Reese and Rhiannon. And they are, are you guys in second grade? Yes. Second grade. Okay. So second, almost third. That's right, because you're getting near the end of the school year. So now we get to hear the grade school perspective. So Reese and Rhiannon, let's start with just just tell all those parents listening kind of what it's been like for you and how it's going doing your schoolwork at home. And what is that all about? I mean, is that challenging? Is it fun? What do you think of it so far? I think it's quite challenging, but... I'm getting used to it, and we also have, like, the summer book we have to do, and I'm just like, no! <laughs> well, if you're asking me generally how is it going, it's good. I've written a book in this time, and it's going kind of good, if you want me to be completely honest, because we have all these books to do. We have something called Typetastic that gets harder and harder, and a lot of stress on that. And, you know, just generally, it's kind of good, kind of bad. It's a combination. Yeah. What would you two say are the good parts about doing your schoolwork at home? Are there things about it that you do like? Why don't you tell us about that first? Well, there are a few things. I get to snuggle with my mom in the morning. Aww. I had a big squishy one this morning. And we pause in the afternoon. So I feel kind of a bit more safe at home. What I would say is another good thing is the snuggles with my mom. I love that you both mentioned that. Yeah, I can't really do that at school. That's for sure. What about things that are harder? Are there are there parts of doing school this way that maybe aren't your favorite or that have been more challenging? What would you say about that? I would say like it's quite challenging because um, lots of times um, I don't understand and sometimes 
my mom gets a bit firm when I just need a little, when I just need someone who like an actual teacher who can actually be patient with me and go through it all. Not saying you're not patient, mom. <laughs> my least favorite part about this is I think we can both say it. Three, two, one. Workbooks. <laughs> not a fan of the workbooks, huh? No. Now, do you not normally do those when you're at school? Is that something that's unique to being at home right now? Not that, not, not that as many. many as that. There's like new ones like grammar. So I'm my least favorite part is getting the summer bridge one straight after we finish all the workbooks. Just when we think we can have a breather, we get a new work. Oh, I see. Okay, so you do some workbook work at school, but it's it's seeming to be more right now. Yeah. Yep. Okay. That makes sense. Now, you guys know from what your mom and I do that we get to talk to a lot of parents. So I'm curious what you think the parents out there should know. What should the moms and dads know about how to do a good job for their kids right now, how they can be helpful? What do you what do you wish they knew from your perspective since you're the ones doing it? Well, sometimes um since this is just we're all six feet and you don't just don't get to see your friends, I would say let your children like let them have something to look forward to. My family sometimes does something called family night where we get to watch a movie. Um, we also um, sometimes do dance parties. So just make there a little fun in this hard time. That's a great suggestion. What about you, Reese? Well, I have two suggestions. One is to have a shorter homeschool time to put less pressure on your kids. Number two is, suggestion is, if your kids are more of a reading type, I do suggest an app called Raz Kids. It's got a bunch of books. Wow. Great suggestions. Okay. So before we wrap up, I want to hear about you personally, but you have to remember your mom's right there. And I want you to be kind to her, but I'm not worried. Rhiannon, you kind of mentioned one thing. So I want to hear kind of what do you think your parents are doing well right now to help you with school? And is there anything that you wish might be different? Like I know, Rhiannon, you mentioned sometimes your mom is a bit firm, but maybe there's also things that she's doing really great. So can you tell us what it's been like for the two of you? What's going really well that you're that you would like your parents to continue? And what are things that you're like, mm, I don't love that part as much? Well, I keep I want my parents to keep continuing, like, like making us pause in the afternoon so that we can just have a little breather and break and keep up the snuggles, mom. <laughs> but the thing that I wish would change, um, which I know my mom and I just figured out that we could work on, but sometimes I have a hard time listening and my brain sometimes turns off and I go wee down. And sometimes I just need a calm voice to remind me. That makes sense. You know, I don't think m my mom could change anything, but I want her to keep up the snuggle and keep up the early school thing. So you also like getting that done in the morning and then having that break in the afternoon. You like that as well? Yeah, I love it. Awesome. Well, for being eight and a half, you are so impressive, both of you. You can put together your thoughts really well. And I think this is going to be so helpful to the parents out there listening because they're getting to hear what it's like for you and also probably get some great tips of how they can give their kids things to look forward to and how they can make sure to keep up the snuggles too. That is an important one. Thanks for coming on and sharing your experience with us. Thank, thank you, you for, for having, having us. us. Oh, thank you so much for talking with them. And you know, it's it's. I'm so glad that they brought up some of the stuff that isn't going well, because I think it's really important that our listeners here, you know, I, I am struggling with this. There are parts of this that are really hard. And she's she's right. I think what's been the trickiest for me is I'm not a teacher. I'm not the world's most patient teacher. I'm a pretty patient mom. But in terms of like trying to get a kid to understand something, like especially with math, I mean, I barely understand math. <laughs> so, so to try and teach a kid multiplication when like I myself don't do it very well. Um, and she's right. Like it comes out 
my own stuff comes out and my own kind of trying to run a house and run a business and homeschool them comes out and I do get kind of firm and I do get frustrated and I you know she and I I love that she said that we're like we are talking about it and working it out but I I want parents to hear that this is hard and yeah. I don't want anyone thinking that I'm over here crushing it cuz I'm I'm not um by any means so I appreciated I appreciated that she was so honest and um and and also it was nice to hear that like those extra snuggles throughout the day. Yes. I mean, I, lo- I love them. I I quite like having them home. So, oh. you know, I think I think it's I, I'm willing to bet there's a lot of families with kids that are experiencing the same thing where they're Absolutely. like, I, there are parts of this I really like that being home and I'm watching my parent not do this very gracefully. Um, and yeah. you know what, FFPs, I, I wouldn't say I'm doing it particularly gracefully. So <laughs> you're not alone. No, so important. I I thought I thought that was just so winsome and sweet and but also very real. And I I guess that's what I really appreciate about kids is there's there's an there's there there's a growing awareness. Reese and Rhiannon have a really great understanding of the world and that is kudos to you. But there is still a little bit less of a filter with kids, and I and in a, and in this case, in a good way, where it's not oh I'm I'm should I say that or shouldn't I say that? you're going to get pretty much the real deal, and I think that's that's overall a really positive thing that they bring to the table that maybe an adult doesn't. We might yeah. we might be tempted to whitewash our responses a little bit, right? So I just ah oh, they're a delight. Thanks. I'm a fan, but you know, I'm a, I'm a smidge bias. Just a smidge of <laughs> Great. I'm glad we got a chance to talk with them. I think that it was a, it was interesting to hear that teens and littles, like everyone is experiencing this. Some of it's good mm-hmm. and some of it's bad. And, mm-hmm. and the, you know, the emotional roller coaster that I think as adults were on as well to kind of know that they're on that too, you know, in a way is, I don't know, comforting because it means that our experiences maybe aren't as far as far apart as it seems. Yeah. Amen. Couldn't agree more. All right. Well, FFPs, hopefully this was a nice sneak peek into the minds of the kids really doing this. I know many of you have expressed that struggle of managing it and facilitating it, but how nice to get a little window into the people doing it and what their experience is on the other side of that coin. We truly hope it's helpful to you as you are possibly in the trenches of this yourself and that maybe you'll take away if nothing else some encouragement that it's hard for everyone in different ways and we know you're doing your best you wouldn't be listening to this podcast if you didn't care about doing an intentional job at all of parenting including this unique season of schooling your children at home so one thing to think about you know as we're starting to come towards some kind of re-entry i know here in washington we are kind of working our way through the phases and there is kind of talk about moving back into the world and we've kind of heard from the kids what the perspective's been like at home right now you know for those of you that have kids who are anxious whether they have a diagnosis of anxiety or you just know that they run anxious um, a lot of the talk in the mental health community right now is around what re-entry is going to look like for those kids because a lot of them have been home and actually been quite comfortable um, because they're with their parents, they're getting those snuggles, right? School isn't all day. They're not having to manage that anxiety all day long. And the muscle is a little bit out of shape. Um, And so I think a lot of parents with anxious kids are thinking about, ooh, what's that going to be like for them. Um, And so we've mentioned before that we released a program on parenting anxious kids, and it is on our website. And we just want to kind of make you aware of it now um, for the near future as you begin to dive into maybe thinking about reentering and some of the concerns that may come up. This program could be really useful for helping give you some tools to navigate that and mitigate it for your kids. So we just encourage you to check that out. Don't forget, our listeners always get a 15% discount. So all you have to do is type in a raising adults and you get that 15% off. So if you go to our website, futurefocusedparenting.com, click on online resources and it will take you to our shop page and you'll find it in there. It's called Empowering Anxious Kids and the program is just designed to help empower the parents and the kids 
kids as they navigate any type of anxiety that they may be experiencing. So definitely consider checking that out. We're going to be moving into a really unique season, moving from one unique season into another. And if that resource will be helpful to you, we really encourage you to get your hands on it. So we just applaud you, wish you all the best, and please, please, please follow, subscribe, find us on social media. We're at Future Focus Parenting on Instagram and Facebook. We love to connect with all of you. So please reach out. We welcome that. Raising Adults is produced by Kira Dorian and Dina Thayer and recorded partially in Kira's laundry room, partially in Dina's bonus room. Music by Seattle band Hannah Lee. Thanks for listening.